we have made it to the welcome sign of Lake Placid and you can see side of the 1932-1980 Winter Olympic Games. I think that's interesting that this little small village hosted the Olympics because the Olympics we associate with big money, big things, right? We don't associate them with a little small town in upstate New York. I'm Lincoln Riddle, the Hidden Gems Travel Guy. Today we're in the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York to explore the region's Olympic past. Lake Placid is by no means a large city. In fact, its population is just around 2,500 people. But this area has hosted the Winter Olympics not once, but twice in 1932 and 1980. Compare Lake Placid to other Olympic host cities around 1980, like Montreal, Moscow, Sarajevo, and it's easy to understand why it's almost shocking that Lake Placid was able to attract the Olympics. The Olympics and the legacy they leave behind has always fascinated me, and I've wanted to visit Lake Placid since I was a kid because of it. Plus, the mountains here are awesome. Hidden gems are everywhere, and I'm showing you where to find them. Subscribe so you don't miss out. We are currently driving in to Lake Placid. We're headed to the ski jump. Now, because of everything that's going on, it is July 2020, um, most of this stuff is closed. You can't actually go in. Some of it's outdoors, so you can see it, but you can't like get close to it. I think you can see the torch, so we're gonna try and see that. The history is still neat to me, plus the ski jumps are magnificent. Seeing them from a distance, I'm crazy, I, I'm crazy. I can't wait to see how tall they are like in person. I imagine they're huge. There they are. That is the Olympic ski jump, if you can see it. So skiers would have skied down that 1980. We're gonna get as close as we can, which might not be that close. I've already seen the Olympic torch from a distance. All right, we are at the John Brown Farm State Historic Site. You can see the ski jumps there. According to this trail map, we can get pretty close to it. We're right here. So we're gonna walk down here, boom, and then we're gonna get as close as we can. Now the ski jump and the bobsled. You can actually do stuff there if you're not a ski jumper, which is kind of cool. When it comes to the ski jump, you can, I looked it up and I saw like a reporter ride a tube down it in the summer. So apparently that's something you can do, you know, in a normal year. The bobsled, you can take the bobsled down in the summer and winter, I believe, which is awesome. I think there's only two places in America where you can uh, ride a bobsled like that. Lake Placid, somewhere out west. I forgot to say the parking lot was closed, it was gated off. That's why we're walking on a trail trying to get as close as we can. Look what we found, guys. Yeah. Huh. Well, sure seems like we're somewhere we're not supposed to be, but yes. Okay, so, so there's the ski jump. Holly's encouraging me to run out there and take a look. I'm going to. She said, what's the worst that can happen? Somebody yells at you. <laughs> Very true. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. An Olympic ski jump. I won't go any further because I'm definitely not supposed to be here. But the big part where they land is down there and then it goes down. Now when I mentioned the tube earlier, um, you don't go down the, obviously the main part of the ski jump, you go down the part where they land and you get really fast, you go like 50 miles an hour in just a couple seconds. Yeah, this is really cool to see. I wish I could go down there and explore I just don't want to get in trouble. I see no point in that. So I looked it up real fast. If you look at the ski jump, there's actually a glass elevator. You might not be able to see it. You can ride that up to the top and get the views and kind of see like what the jumper sees when they're about to do it. Um, and I believe that's a part of something called the Olympic Passport, which gives you like one ticket to see everything Olympic related. Next up, we're not too far away from it. We're going to see the Olympic Cauldron, and this is next to an equestrian farm or park or stadium or something. That spot right next to that is where they built the stadium, a temporary stadium, for the opening ceremony back in 1980. This is the place where we're going. I'm not sure where the stadium was. You can see over here they've got the equine stuff. The Olympic Cauldron is straight ahead. So I just asked these people walking their dogs over here where the opening ceremony was held and they told me so i can give you that information we're at the cauldron now it is right in front of me and there it is folks the 1980 olympic cauldron in all of its glory it's definitely seen better days i won't lie isn't that something i just want you to think about how random this is that i'm standing next to an olympic cauldron there's nothing behind me <laughs> There's mountains off in the distance, which is fitting for the Winter Olympics. There's like a small scenic, you know, like small plane airport right there. There's like 
football fields right here and baseball fields for like recreational youth football. And then boom, <laughs> an Olympic cauldron that apparently, from what I've been told, this is the original spot that it was in. That's what those people just told me right there. There is a plaque, I'll have to go read that. So it says, here on February 13th, 1980, the Olympic Winter Games were opened by the Vice President of the United States, Walter Elf Mondale. And here, the sacred Olympic flame was brought from Olympia, Greece, to shed its light for 12 days on the quadrennial renewal of the ancient Olympic spirit of excellence, brotherhood, and peace. This tower was erected to hold that flame and stands as an everlasting monument to the 1,282 Olympians from 37 nations who took part in these Olympic Games. They told me that this field right here is where the actual opening ceremony was held, so it sat in front of it directly. At one time, folks, this right here was the site of the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics. You see the ski jump over there? Honestly, absolutely nothing in here aside from that cauldron and a couple of Olympic There's an Olympic platform with some rings on it like the Olympic rings But other than that, there's really nothing around here. That's like hey, this is where the Olympics <laughs> were held super fascinating To me to think that this right here was on an international scale What was once a bustling area for fans and Olympians alike is now a place where Parents come and yell at coaches for not playing their kids enough. So this is the second Olympic cauldron that I have seen in person. The other was in Montreal. Montreal is another fascinating Olympics. Also a cool spot to see. You can see the big O named so because it cost way too much money to build. That's the stadium that the Expos played in that hosted the opening and closing ceremonies of the Olympics and you know a myriad of other events. This was really cool to see. Wow. I'm glad I got to do that. All right, next we're gonna try and go see the bobsledding course. I believe that's a part of the Olympic sports complex. We're gonna try because again, I'm not sure if we'll be able to see anything, but it's worth a drive. I was just telling Holly that my fascination with the Olympics is it necessary, like I like the games and I like the actual sports and that sort of thing, but what it really boils down to is it's very expensive. You can see it right there. That's it. Well, it's kind of broken up. Look at, see how steep those hills are? But I was telling her, like, it's not necessarily the sports or the, it's like the money. It's a huge, big money spender thing. Like, it costs a ton of dough. And it's just interesting because a lot of times the ski, like, the, the facilities get left in ruin. They don't get used again. Like, look at Greece 2004, even Rio now. China has some, not as many. Sochi. Like, it's just very interesting the way that it all goes down and plays out. And we've made it to the Olympic Sports Complex. I don't know what all sports they do here but they for sure do bobsledding and luge we'll see how far down we can drive i'm not sure if we can get that far all right we've reached signs that say construction access only which to me means it's time to turn around you can see up here there's construction going on there's construction going on that way down that road so we're just gonna turn around. Okay, so we are headed back to downtown Lake Placid. I'm gonna show you a couple things there. Um, there's an Olympic skating oval, which is actually outdoors. And then you've got the arenas, like where the Miraclon eyes happen, so. This town has got some beautiful views of mountains. I tell you what, these are the high peaks. 4,000 footers, there's like 40 plus of them. Uh, we are currently standing outside of the 1932 rink for the 1932 Olympics. You can see the Olympic rings up there. You can really only take a look at the exterior of these buildings because they're closed to the public. But normally you could go in them and explore them. And look at the view. You got the high peaks out here. The ski jump is right there. The 1932 building that I just showed you with the rings at the top is also attached to this one. And in this whole complex, I think there's three rinks total. One of which is the rink that uh, the miracle on ice happened when the USA beat the USSR. We have made it to our next little stop. This right here is actually a speed skating oval. That's a high school. This speed skating oval is still actually in use to this day. It was used in the 1932 and 1980 Olympics. You can see it is a true oval. It goes all the way around. So in 1932, this played host to the opening and closing ceremonies. I read that on Wikipedia. According to college, you shouldn't source Wikipedia, but here we are. But nowadays, you can rent skates here and public skate this in the winter. How often do you walk around an Olympic skating rink? 
not very. I'm not in my case anyways. I have got this sign down here. The legends of the Oval. Each of these flags represents one of the countries that was a part of the 1980 Winter Olympics. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Lake Placid, some of the Olympic sites. If you're new here, I'm Lincoln Riddle, the Hidden Gems travel guy. I go to Hidden Gems, I showcase them here. Subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you in the next one.